Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Uh, so recently it's been announced that uh, Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, is, although Hasbro branding seems to be pretty prevalent on it, uh, is going to be releasing a new starter set for D&D 5th Edition based off of the Netflix series Stranger Things. Now admittedly that's a series I really haven't watched yet uh, and I know that there's a lot of like D&D sort of references especially the, like the first episode or so and like the creature name stuff like that but I just I haven't gotten around to it yet I do hope to get a copy of the starter set uh, when it comes out so hopefully I'll be able to do a video on that but it also just sort of got me thinking um, you know I it's a box set I love box sets and I have not a ton of them but I do have at least a handful and I thought it'd be kind of fun to just sort of do like unboxings for them um, uh, for me, some of these, it'll be the first time in years that I've actually opened the box up and sort of looked at the contents that are inside. And I, like I said, it's something that I think would be fun. And um, so I think I might make a little series out of this. And, the, you know, they're pretty easy video uh, videos to throw together. Um, and uh, if I don't know if you can hear it or not, but there's actually kind of a bad winter storm going out right now. Uh, it's like after... Um, it's after midnight when I'm recording this. Just in case there is a storm day tomorrow, um, I won't be able to record a video if there is. So anyway, let's just go ahead and sort of open this up and we'll have a look. So this is the D&D basic game for uh, Dungeons & Dragons version 3.5. Uh, this came out, I believe, in 2004 or 5... Uh, 2004 is when this came out. So it was a year after the actual release of 3.5. Um, so we'll, like I said, just sort of look at the box, we'll look at what's inside the box, and uh, yeah, go from there. So first of all, I really love the artwork on the outside here. Like the Black Dragon from third edition uh, forward to today is probably one of my favorite dragon designs of all time. Like that initial like Todd Lockwood uh, Black Dragon from the 3.0 uh, Monster Manual, or even like they use the same artwork in 3.5. Uh, I just instantly fell in love with that particular dragon. Like I said, it's my favorite design even to this day. Uh, so this artwork would actually be reused in the Dragon's Collector's Edition box that had like the five um, dragon minis on like the large base. And uh, so this was the artwork that was actually on the inside of the cover. And I think I showed that off. I'm pretty sure I did a, like a, a video showing like the, the inside of that box set. So love this artwork. Uh, again, Black Dragon, one of my all-time favorites. And I guess it's a little bit of a spoiler as to what's in, uh, inside the box. On the top, it just says everything you need to start playing the Dungeons & Dragons role-playing game. And then it has here, uh, you know, easy to set up and play and contains 16 uh, painted miniatures. These were all taken from the D&D um, minis line. Um, so these are all, like, there's nothing unique in this box. Uh, there's nothing new uh, for, like, there's not, like, an exclusive mini uh, inside of here. They were all just sort of recast from the molds for the uh, the minis game. And it actually does include a stack card for uh, the D&D minis game as well. And as I open it up and so you sort of look inside, you'll see that I already I actually taken out one of the cards uh, to use in the game, and it's, it's packed away somewhere, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, the all four sides of the box all contain just the same thing, just has everything you need to start playing uh, the Dungeons & Dragons game. A little bit of shelf wear, uh, unfortunately. I mean, this is something that is uh, like 15 years old now. Um, so initially, you know, when I was first getting into D&D, &D, even back in like the 3.5 days, um, where I was storing my, my books and box sets, stuff like that, it was a little bit of a rougher texture than the bookshelf that I have now. So a little bit of wear, but honestly for, you know, this sort of being pulled off and put back on the shelves, you know, quite a few times over the course of, you know, that 15 years, it's, it's not that bad. On the back, you can hear the minis rolling around in there. Uh, this is a set that has been fully played, so everything's like out of their baggies and everything. Uh, but here we have uh, just an image of, you know, some kids playing the starter set or the, the, the uh, basic game here. You got like the DM holding up the adventure book. This is like the first adventure book. And um, yeah, and it's, it's for me, it's always sort of a throwback to like some of those old like video game uh, ads 
or even like some of the boxes might have like a family huddle around a TV and it just seems like you know that uh, that sort of thing but it's still really cool to have like actual people playing the game on the box uh, ages 12 plus two to five players and it just has you know some stuff here you know become a hero brave the unknown bring your friends if you want to read everything there you can uh, pause the video and then we have you know just the 2004 uh, and there's one interesting thing on the back of this box that I will probably reference here in a few moments. Uh, we have a preview of some of the minis that are included. So you got the four hero characters and of course the black dragon. Uh, also, just sort of uh, keep, in, keep in your mind this image of the, uh, the Eberk uh, Dwarf Cleric mini. Because, yeah, um, you'll see when I get to it. Uh, so on the back here also says everything you need to play is right here. 16 fully painted minis, 4 heroes, 12 monsters, uh, 4 double sided map tiles, 4 character sheets, 7 dice, quick start rules, first adventure book, and the advanced rule book. And let's just go ahead and open this up. Alright, uh, I'm going to just set these minis aside actually for the time being. We'll sort of look at those last, or near the, uh, near the end. So I'm just going to quickly sort of organize these just a little bit. Alright. And just sort of set some of the redundant ones off to the side. <clears throat> Alright, just some cardboard things here to sort of keep things from rattling around too, too much. Of course you have to have your survey card. This was included in a lot of D&D products uh, back in the day. Uh, keep in mind 2004, uh, even though it is into the 2000s, um, you know, the internet was, it was, you know, not necessarily in its infancy, but it wasn't as, you know, widespread as it is now. <clears throat> so back then, for people that are young, too young to remember, um, you know, a lot of products came with these uh, mail-in survey cards. And if you lived in the U.S., you didn't even need to include a stamp. Uh, so we also have, so we have our character sheets here. First thing we have is a sheet that says read this first. And it just goes through the steps like, you know, pick a dungeon master, explains a little bit about what a dungeon master is, and that they read the first adventure book, but they keep it to themselves. <clears throat> the players choose their characters. You set aside the miniatures and the tiles. <clears throat> and then you get ready. On the back here, it actually has some special abilities. Uh, well, a special ability, so it has sneak attack, sort of a description, explanation of how that works, including a visual aid, which, honestly, as somebody who um, is DMing, you know, a couple of different 5th uh, edition games, I will say that I kind of appreciate the fact that in 3rd edition, at first I thought it was kind of annoying, but in 3rd edition you really had to work a bit more, not necessarily a ton, but you actually had to work a bit to get sneak attack, and now it's just handed to you on a silver platter almost. And um, yeah, anyway, uh, that's you know a, a subject for another time. Uh, and then you got like some uh, information on casting spells, as well as the spell descriptions for I think all of the starting spells that the two characters, the cleric and the sorcerer, get. And we'll just set that aside. And then we have our four characters. I'm not going to go over every single thing uh, in detail, but there are some things that I like about this very, very simple stripped down character sheet. Uh, everyone has a set number for their initiative, meaning that in battle, you know, Regdar would always go at initiative count 11. And it looks like the way they determined initiative was just like a t 10 plus their dexterity modifier. Uh, it's got their speed and squares, their weapon attacks, armor class, hit points, and their special abilities, so like for example, Regdar has power attack and cleave. A little bit of a backstory, uh, just you know, not anything too in depth, but a little information on the character as well as what their job is in the party. And uh, they also have the different dice down here, uh, so images of what they look like, which in my opinion is actually really really helpful. Uh, I'll show the dice here uh, in a moment, or at least a set that is you know very very similar, if not completely identical. Uh, so that's actually pretty cool. 
And then on the back, they have the different skills that are used in the context of this particular starter set. So it's not the comprehensive list of skills, but it's all the skills that you're going to need uh, to play this adventure. You've got your saving throws, armor, weapons, and your ability scores here, along with their modifiers. It looks like they sort of went for a standard array of stats. Um, because like, you know, Regdar as the fighter only has 15 strength, which seems, you know, kind of low. Uh, human fighter first level and then alignment good so <clears throat> you know again sort of a, uh, a very stripped down version of that you have like just the good and evil axis of the alignment system so there's no like lawful or chaotic in this particular one so we got him there and then we have Eberk the cleric it's got his spells his domain ability uh, which is protective ward and again everything's pretty much the uh, the exact same um, you know, his wisdom is 15, so again, it, it really does feel like they're using sort of a standard array. Then you have uh, Aramil, the elf sorcerer. And uh, honestly, I I kind of think that for, especially in 3rd edition 3.5, that the sorcerer was the better option of the two arcane classes to have in a starter set. Um, like the wizard, for example, is just very locked into, you know, if you have three spell slots, for example, but you only memorize Magic Missile once, you can only use it once, whereas uh, this character has four uh, first level spell slots and can cast like Mage Armor and then three Magic Missile sort of thing. And if they get other first level spells, then you can sort of mix and match that as well. So I think that was sort of the best way to go uh, when it comes to the Arcane classes, because again, this is aimed at beginners. And if you're a beginner and you just like, you know, I want to throw, like, use a spellcaster, and then you realize that you picked all the wrong spells, it can really uh, impact your enjoyment. So I thought that was actually a, a pretty good choice. Um, although I don't know how they got seven hit points, because uh, I think sorcerers were still rolling D. Fours. I don't think they were. Were they rolling d6s for their hit dice? It's it's been a while since I actually looked at that information in uh, in third edition. But I thought they were d4s. So that's it's interesting. But I th think it might be a mistake. Anyway, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I'll probably look that up actually once I'm done here because that's going to bug me. Uh, and then we have Lida, our halfling rogue, which of course it's a halfling rogue, and. Um, yeah, she's a little bit better with a 17 dexterity, so one of her primary abilities. Um, although, interestingly enough, um, I don't think they gave her weapon finesse as her feat. They gave her improved initiative instead, which is cool, but I think weapon finesse would have made her a bit better, because uh, then she could have a plus 4 to hit. Uh, or actually, yeah, it would only be a plus 3 to hit. How did she get plus 4? You know what? I'm I'm not going to worry about that right now. They're probably, you know, like I said, the numbers may be off a little bit, but uh, I don't think Rogues had a base attack bonus of plus one at first level, so pretty sure they had zero. Anyway, moving on, we have our first adventure book. <clears throat> so this gives you a little minor scenario. It's uh, a single encounter, basically, um, but it's you know not a bad one to have. It shows sort of like the setup with the uh, the creatures that you use. And uh, you know some descriptive text to read out loud, stat blocks for the uh, the monsters that you're using, and uh, just some cool little information that way. And I really like the fact that they have like the colored covers to make this sort of look like the style of the player's handbook. So you got this sort of like that leather bound book appearance. I thought that was really cool. Then you got the quick start rules, which just goes over sort of the uh, some of the basics, um, how to make attack rolls, how to make saving throws. I believe are in here as well. Moving, um, actions in combat, um, you know, uh, shooting into melee, uh, flanking, stuff like that. Same kind of cover. And then we get to the advanced rule book itself. And this was a little bit disappointing, uh, in my opinion. And I'll show you why. Because you have like the black and white, which I understand. It's a cost cutting thing. You know, uh, colored ink can be kind of expensive, right? So to me, this, you know, sort of makes sense until you open the book. And then you see that the inside cover is actually still like full color. And it's the same on the back cover as well, which has an advertisement for the player's handbook. So they, you know, they had, uh, they, so they were still printing color onto this. And I think it would have been nice to have had, 
Even if this was like, you know, colored blue like a Dungeon Master's Guide, I thought that might have been kind of neat. But it's just, I don't know, the fact that they made this black and white but then included color on the inside cover always seemed kind of weird to me. Uh, inside you sort of have your uh, basic versions of the Player's Handbook, which oddly enough, there looks like there's a spot there for a picture of the Player's Handbook, but there's not one. Uh, we do get to see what it looks like in the back here. Uh, and it just actually has some information on making a character, which is pretty cool. So you can actually make your own character based off of the options available to you here. Which is, um, you got the races, so you have dwarves, elves, halflings, and humans. And then, you know, the other ones, these are the other races that you can play, but they're all in the player's handbook. Then you have the classes, with again some interesting artwork there as well. So the classes in here are Cleric, Fighter, uh, Rogue, and Sorcerer. And then, you know, there's, you know, it, it doesn't really give any information about other types of classes, but it does say that once you reach third level, um, you have to use the uh, Player's Handbook. So it gives you, like, all the first level stuff here, and then it gives you some information on second level, which is pretty cool. Uh, it gives you a handful of feats, uh, skills, uh, equipment, so you can, uh, you know, buy armor, weapons, other, you know, mundane stuff as well. Uh, some combat, basic combat information, uh, which again is pretty cool. Sp and then you got your spells here. It also includes a fair number of third level spells, which you have to be fifth level to get, or sixth level for the uh, for the sorcerer. So it's interesting that they have them in there. Probably stuff that you can get through like potions or scrolls, but you're definitely not going to get that high level uh, in here. And then you have the Dungeon Master's Guide, which again, it looks like there should be a spot for an image of the book, but there's nothing there. And I'll sort of explain why in a moment. Uh, this just gives you some treasure charts, some magic items, uh, how to award experience, and then it gives you a full-on adventure, uh, which uses the information in here, and takes place directly after um, the, uh, the, the quick start adventure that we had there. And... Um, yeah, it is, uh, it is a mess out there, <laughs> uh, if you can hear the wind. But, um, or more to the fact here, like the freezing rain hitting the window. So this is the, the setup of like the tiles that we'd use. Um, so it gives you sort of what the full dungeon looks like. Unfortunately, you can't actually have this out on your table as such, um, because you only have four tiles that use like double-sided. But again, this is something that's kind of perfect for a smaller uh, setting. So you really only need the tile that you're using at the time to be out. But it gives the uh, the full adventure there, which is pretty cool. And it's a decent adventure. You know, at the end you can fight this black dragon. And um, I don't want to spoil too much, but there's, um, there's an encounter uh, that you can have earlier on where you think you're in very serious trouble. Uh, but then it turns out that, you know, it's a bit of a swerve. Uh, and I think that that's actually uh, really, really cool. It's a really effective encounter. And I actually had a friend of mine run this for me, and I never read the adventure thoroughly at the time, so he actually got me with that. So that that was a pretty, pretty fun memory, actually. It was like a holy crap type of moment, and then it just ended up being... It, it was just a swerve, bro. And... Um, that's a reference for all you wrestling fans out there. So here's why I brought up the uh, the other parts here. So we have the basic monster manual. And the monster manual section actually shows the monster manual cover and what it looks like. Whereas the player's handbook and dungeon master guides didn't. But it really felt like they, you know, had the place to do it and they just didn't, which was always which just it's it strikes me as weird even now just sort of looking through it. And um, I don't know. I, I don't know why they, they threw in the one cover and not the other, but it just gives you, again, some monsters. And I think that uh, these are all actually, like, the monsters from the adventure. So I don't think it gives you, like, extra ones or anything like that. Uh, but these are, like, just the more comprehensive uh, full stats versus using, like, the stack cards there. And uh, in the back, another thing that I actually think is really cool is it gives you a completely uh, other dungeon that you can use with these tiles. And it says, you know, stock this dungeon yourself. So it's something that, you know, right away can get the creative juices flowing a little bit. And that's that. So then we have, these are the, uh, the stack cards themselves. are based off of the earlier version of the D&D Minis game. Uh, I did take out the Black Dragon uh, Mini to use. 
and because uh, I was using it in the game and lost my original card. So that's in a box somewhere, and I'm not too worried about it because I'm probably never going to play that game again anyway. Uh, so we got all that stuff there. And then we got our tiles. Now the one thing about the tiles is um, I actually sort of uncurled them, but these are very prone to warping. And I said on the back there was something about the, uh, the tiles. If you can look, a key and I might see that this one's curled up here. That tile is curled up. It looks like it's curled up a little bit as well. So even from the very beginning, um, when I first, even when I first bought these, um, you know, a friend, my friend ran this, you know, a week or so after I bought it, and the tiles had already started to warp. I, I, just something about the way that these react, even the slightest bit of humidity. But they are still, you know, cool looking tiles nonetheless, so we'll just kind of show it off here. So this is tile 1A. So this is the one that you used for the very first adventure. And then this is uh, 1B. Then you have 2A which has like a little wizard's laboratory sort of area. And then you have side B, which is sort of like an entrance to a crypt kind of thing. Uh, 3A has a room, in, uh, a room filled with like just smashed, destroyed pillars and statuary, uh, as well as a mushroom uh, patch, basically. And then in the back, you just have some more rooms. And then we have 4A, which is the uh, the actual crypt itself with the uh, stone coffins, sarcophagus, whatever they might be, some statues and an evil looking altar, and just another sort of big open area there as well. So those are the tiles, and like I said, so you know the the adventure uses both sides of all four tiles. So again, you can't have the full dungeon laid out, uh, but it does sort of make for some interesting uh, visuals, I guess, because like when you first play this. Um, unless the DM covers this part up, you can see that there's a room that you have no way to get to. And it looks like there's, you know, something important. It's kind of a metagamey thing, but it still kind of makes you want to go on. Uh, because there's just no way to get in there yet. So you have to, like, loop your entire way around uh, with it. But, you know, the tiles themselves, they are still nice. And you could do some cool things with them. So um, I do appreciate having those. Uh, all right, up next, uh, we'll just show the uh, the dice right quick. Uh, these are not the original dice that came in the set. Um, the reason is is that they completely matched what was the 30th anniversary uh, dice set for D&D 3rd Edition, or 3.5, because this would have been 2004 as well. So they're the exact same dice. Um, the only thing is that the anniversary set had more D6. But this is what you would have had in the box, and because I didn't really need duplicate sets, uh, I gave away the set that came in here to someone that was looking to get into uh, the D&D game. So anyway, you got your D4, and they're just all solid colors. You have like the red D6, blue D8, uh, you have the green D10, um, then you have the yellow D12, orange D20 of course, and then you have a purple percentile dice. The only thing about this is that the D10 has the number 10 printed on it, and but it still has a percentile dice. So I feel like this becomes a little bit more complicated for beginners because if you roll a 10 here and you get double zeros there, it, you know you may think that you know you rolled um, 100 instead of like it just being like literally 10%. Or if you get this, for example. So, I mean, I know, like, for experienced players, it makes complete and total sense, and we know that this, you know, this is the singles die, and that's the tens digit die. But again, if you're brand brand new, having the the ten on there, it's great for everything except percentiles. And this is the set that actually had a percentile dice with it. But anyway, minor nitpick. All right, up next. And lastly, we've got the minis themselves. Most of these are nothing special. Like I said, they're recast from the D&D minis game. And these were pretty much all commons or uncommons with, I think, one exception. So we'll just go ahead and sort of show these off quickly. First one we have here is the Kobold Warrior with the crossbow and the spear on his back. Then we have just a Kobold Warrior with nothing but a spear. Or probably javelin, actually. We have the skeleton, sword and shield, 
a wolf skeleton. And what's kind of cool is the, the collar and chain is actually a, um, don't know how well it's going to show up here, but it's actually a separate piece. So it's not, um, you know, all molded into one. It's actually a separate piece that was put on. I always thought that was kind of neat. Then you have a giant rat. The red glowy eyes. Orc warrior. And some of the early orcs were, were kind of ugly looking. Um, this was like one of the ones that would have come with the Harbinger set. And we got a troglodyte. And they did not paint um, his sword at all. <laughs> uh, but I think he's supposed to be using a club, so I guess it makes sort of sense. Even though the, uh, the actual minis, I'm pretty sure those are painted silver. Alright, and then we got our hero. So here we have Lita. Our halfling rogue with her rapier and short bow. Uh, we have Aramil with the elven sorcerer. And we have uh, Regdar, our human fighter with his great sword. And bow and arrow. Alright, and then we have Eberk, and I said I wanted to sort of, so this is the Eberk Mini that they show here, and the D&D Minis line was notorious for this, so you see like the gold, and sort of like the accents on the shield, and that's a pretty cool looking Mini, right? So this is what you actually get. So, you know, it's, it's, it's alright, I mean it's a nice looking Mini, I actually kind of like the metallic blue, honestly better than the gold, but this was something that the D&D minis line was just famous for, was constantly showing off like the like the, the ones that they had done for the promotional material as being completely different than what you actually got, and that's sort of another thing that ended up happening here, but you know, still a cool looking mini, just not not the same at all um, when you really look at it. And then of course we have our Black Dragon. Again, just a medium-sized black dragon. One of my uh, favorite designs for dragons of all time. And this is, just for comparison, this is the dragon mini from the actual minis game that came out about a year before. Uh, fairly similar. Uh, I think the dry brushing is a little bit better on the original, though. If you look at sort of like the crest of horns at the back there, um, you can see it looks, it looks like there's just like a thick paint just stripe going across the top there. But still, you know, a pretty good job. And that is uh, the D&D uh, basic game for uh, 3.5 Dungeons & Dragons. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And, and for anyone who hasn't had a chance to, to see this yet or to ever, you know, see inside these, uh, these box sets, I hope that this is something that's sort of an enjoyable experience. Uh, like I said, I have a few other box sets that I would absolutely love to open up again and just sort of go through and um, and and in some of them you know look at them for the first time and you know well years um, so yeah I like I said I hope you enjoyed and yeah um, if you had this box set let me know in the comments below what you thought of it if you uh, got to play or run the adventure you know let me know how you enjoyed that and I just want to thank you guys very much for watching. Um, so again, this is a series that I hope to do some more of with just some of the other box sets that I have. They're not all like starter sets or basic games, but I still think this is a, you know, it'll be fun for me to go through and, uh, and do these. So once again, thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate all of your support, and I will see you next time. Take care.